Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Hi guys, welcome to One Minute Tennis. In today's session, I want to talk to you about the low volley. I want to talk to you about why it's a problem for so many players. A big mistake that so many players, even at the highest level, actually make with this stroke and how you can improve your low volley instantly and effectively. Now, the first thing with the low volley is it happens very quick. If we had time, then we wouldn't let the ball get down here. We'd go and meet it and meet it at a higher point. So it's going to be a fast reaction situation. And what most people do, the error that most people make in playing that stroke is that they chop down and slice on the low volley using a combination of the angle of the racket and the trajectory of the racket to put the ball back into court. And that's fine but it slows the ball down. So now I'm in a vulnerable position at the net where the opponent can lob me or drive past or at me, and yet I've just sliced and slowed the ball down to give them time to set up and think about what they're gonna do. This is not ideal. So what is the solution? Now, when we play the low volley, what we want to do is play through the ball with a clean, firm stroke, taking away the opponent's time. This is easier than most players think. If you take one simple reference, get your head as close as you can to the racket head and then play the stroke. You see, as the racket head goes away from my head and away, therefore I'm stretching for it, then I become weaker and my tendency is to have to chop to play the ball. It's the same on both sides. If I was volleying in your direction here, then on the forehand I play low, and the tendency is that I have to scoop and slice the ball. If you watch even the best players in the world, Daniel Medvedev has a real problem with this. He doesn't have good technique. Give him a low volley and the guy's in all kinds of trouble. But if I make sure that my head is close to the racket head, then loads of other things happen. The arms are stronger, the body's closer, my weight is closer to contact. So look at the difference between reaching for it and slicing down on the ball and having my head close to the racket head. When my head is close to the racket head, then I'm in a strong position and it's kind of natural to push through the ball and place it back into the court where I want without excessive spin. Quite simply, keep this relationship between your head and the racket head, and you'll find that your low volley becomes almost a weapon. It's not ideal. We want to be playing volleys from here and destroying the ball, but that's not in our control. The height of the ball when we're playing at the net is really in the hands of the opponent. So we're not always going to get the dream height volley that, uh, that we really like. So once again, don't let the racket head go away from your head. When you get a low volley, then get this connection between your head and the racket head, and you'll see that suddenly you can play these difficult, challenging balls with control, accuracy, consistency, and you can make even the most difficult part of your net game a real weapon. I hope this makes sense, and I'd love to hear how it works for your game or your player's game. We love your feedback and I always reply to every single message. Please remember to like, share and subscribe the channel, please. And remember, if you need more help with your game, we do one-to-one -one online consultations. It's a unique service and the information for this is on the website below. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work.